My name is Walter Tucker from ISD. This is training on the Gibbs School Fire Alarm System in Arlington, Mass. So, this panel should be, you have a voice evac panel here, which you have amplifiers throughout the building. Like you have multiple amplifiers on, up on, on the upper floors, and you have amplifiers in this cabinet as well. It has this in there. The two of them here, I think you have two, I think you might have one on each upper floors. Yeah, I think I see them in the IT closet. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yep, right. with boosters as well, horn boosters for the strobes. Yep. So those those amplifiers are just for the audio speakers. Okay. And you have strobes. So they're all labeled. And all these circuits, if you have an open circuit, it comes up. It says amplifier one, circuit two. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They'll tell you all that fun stuff. Um, you have some enable and disable buttons we set up for you, just for quick oh, speaker okay. strobes, yeah. elevator recall, HVAC control, door holders, auxiliary functions, which is all your like. Um, lighting shutdowns, all your um, audio shutdowns for the auditorium, your security stuff. Okay. Pretty much anything that doesn't fall in any of these other categories are under auxiliary. Okay. So not many of them. I think there's probably like five modules on it. Yeah. Um, every time you hit the button, so like for example, if you want to disable that, they come up as a disable percentage. This is a 3030. I don't know if you're familiar with the 3030 with no. the big screen. So. See IT room public public address system. Yeah. See nine. It'll, it gives you like a, a tally right there. Yeah. So obviously troubles are troubles like ground faults, open circuits, invalid or of troubles. Disables come up as other. Okay. Because they're technically they're in trouble, but they're technically not troubles because no, you really, did something. You did. Exactly. So and then obviously just press the button again, re-enables it. Okay. Everything goes normal. Um, you do have these two messages as well. I don't know. I don't know if you guys do your own testing. Uh, we usually do the testing with the elevator company for the elevator recall. Yeah. So, so the biggest thing is like disable those the speakers. Speed and strobes. Strobes. If yeah. you did have have to set the horns off for some reason, you wanted to make sure something worked, you have this test message and the test clear message. Okay. That's just a pre-recorded message so that you don't have to pick up the microphone and say we are testing in the building or have the office put a do a do a thing do yeah, an yeah, announcement. Yeah, yeah. It's right here. You can do it right from here. There's a speaker in every room. In the building, sure. so that'll announce everybody at the, in the building of what's going on. And then you have a test clear, which is you play that after to say the testing is done. Anything after this is a real event. Okay. So, um, so these buttons obviously will give you group disables for all of these devices. I did give you a water flow one too, because right. I know sometimes you have sprinkler work being done. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah. come in here, disable the water flows. Okay. And then all the smokes and stuff are still active. You don't have to disable the horns. Yeah. Because obviously tampers and stuff will just cause the cause that. Yeah. So um, you do have a radio master box upstairs in the BD on the second floor okay. where the BDA system is. Um, it's actually, I guess that radio box is, was the existing one. Yeah. So okay. wherever it was in the old the old panel is the same place. Okay. We never really worked on the old building. Yeah. We can take a walk and look at that yeah. and show you where it is. Um, but that's there. Um, the box numbers here. That trips by floor and gives you the water flow zone. It does, the fire department does monitor troubles here. Okay. So if you do anything, um, you have to call the fire department. Fire, yeah, yeah. There's a five minute delay on the troubles, just in case something, you get a ground fall bang in and out or something someday. It doesn't blow their system up. But, yeah. So, so there's that. Um, I can go over with you on how to like, say you had a dirty smoke detector, like this one. You can twisted the smoke detector out. Get in trouble. Connector one, plus. So that's the only trouble you're gonna get. Yep. No answer. IT data room B112, first floor, smoke detector. I'm gonna give you the timestamp right down to the second of when it happened. Oh. With the date and time, all right there. And then obviously you have two acknowledge buttons on this panel. You can either hit this button right here, acknowledge. Yep. Or you can hit this acknowledge button. I will tell you from experience, these buttons work a lot better than these ones. Do. If you get a lot going on, sometimes these can bog. It gets bogged down. They're there. It'll work, obviously, but these ones work a little bit quicker. So you have a drill button here. That drill will function. I have it set up that it sounds, that it trips all the speakers and strobes. It all works with the voice and everything. I know sometimes the drill switches are not programmed, but Arlington does want them all working because then they come in and do their drill. A lot of fire departments will just go pull a pull station, exactly. but they can do the pull. You'll, you'll, 
you'll probably see them. They, they will do a. Um, they'll just pull the whole station most likely, but yeah, it does work. That, yeah. Yep. You have an enunciator up front too. That you actually have the display without the keyboard. You have just pretty much ignore silence, reset, grill buttons right there, and a microphone. Okay. So that they can do paging they from the enunciator. Um, here, where it's such a small, really kind of technically a small building, I know it's big, but uh, yeah, you only no, have three floors. Yeah. You hear the mic, it just automatically does an all call through the whole building. Okay. Yep. So, and here it does that as well. I talked to the fire department, they didn't want selective by floor, which I don't yeah. think you, that's usually for high rise applications, you get nine, ten floors, so you yeah. don't have that here. So, say you have the smoke detector and it's, for some reason it won't work, but you want to disable it so that it doesn't come up as a trouble. Yep. So, you go into programming. Right here, program all the status. Passwords all ones for okay. your, yeah. you, you must be familiar with this side. Yep. So you hit accept. Choose one option, alter status. Disable, enable. And then it comes up detector. This is node one, so you're always gonna have node zero, zero, one. Loop one, just, it just happens to be loop one, detector one. Yep. So you hit accept. It actually tell you trouble inactive no answer. It tells you the is that disable? Is this compromised fire protection? Are you sure? Yeah. Yes. It's all liability. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's all set. So now that points disabled, and when we back out of program, you'll notice trouble's gone, and it's back as, a, as an other now. So technically, we have no troubles in the system, even though the trouble lights on. Okay. Trouble lights on because they consider they still consider a disable point as a trouble. It but does. It, it will report to the fire department as a trouble, but at least you can look and say, "Look, we have no troubles. I disabled a smoke detector because we have to order it." We got it. Yeah. Yeah. Order, so. So, and th that'll work better too because you're not always going to be able to reach them. Sometimes it's up high, it's a duck smoke. Yeah. You're going to be able to do the same exact thing with a duck smoke. Okay. So, and obviously, yeah. when, you, when it's disabled, you're going to look at this. It blinked right real quick because it has voltage. When it's disabled. It will do an initialization when you twist it back up. That's the panel just making sure it's there. It's still. Yep. While it's disabled, the lights will not blink. Okay. That goes with even all the control modules. If you disable them, they'll stop blinking. That's yep. how you can also just verify that yeah, they are yeah. disabled. Yep. So that trouble, the system initialization, that's just going through the whole system right now. It's checking every device because something changed. We, we clicked in a new head. It's just double checking it. Yep. And any troubles that come up, from this is because it sees something it doesn't like. Say you take down the heat detector, you put a smoke detector back up. It's yeah. going to come up and say um, invalid detector. You have to switch it off. So it, the system knows more about itself than it <laughs> probably should. But yeah, it, it's very, it's very intuitive. So um, from there, I mean that's other than that, that's really it. We can show you what troubles will look like, but I mean the trouble is going to show up. Yeah. Booster, second floor, open circuit. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward. You got to go to the, the. Obviously, that won't tell you what's wrong with the booster. You have to go up to the booster and see what lights are lit. Yeah. But it's all supervised. Everything's good. Um, so yeah. Yeah, the biggest thing is, uh, like I said, the, we do the elevator recalls. We do yep. that in house. So yeah. So you just, just come in, do program, just the password one one one. Hit those two. Good. You don't even have to actually do the passwords. Oh, you don't need. Nope. You just walk That's up. only for programming. That's only for programming. Oh, okay. All you have to do is come up and hit speakers and strobe disables. Maybe even the door holders, so you don't have to go walk around and reset all the doors. Okay. Because that's done on your annual by your fire alarm company. Yeah. And uh, you go from there. All right. So you don't even need a password. No, you don't even need a password for this. Oh, all you need is this key. And that key. <laughs> okay. So it's pretty protected. That's yeah. why we don't mind doing it for you guys. Uh, we don't put a master box disable on here. For the fire department's request, yeah. because the fire department wants to know when you're doing. Yeah, they, they just want to be able to keep monitor it so that not that they don't trust you, they don't trust certain people. You know, yeah, that I'd rather put this guy. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You don't want one of the teachers coming in here and hitting disable. <laughs> it's a crazy world we live in, unfortunately. Yeah. So we'll re enable. Actually, well, you want to try to re enable that detector so you get some a little bit of field support on it. Eight, eight one, just fill the line with it. Say one able, yeah. It is detector one though. Yeah, but you have to do node one as well. 
comes up, it defaults at node zero. Oh. Because we have a voice system, technically this is node one and this is node two. Okay. But you're only going to deal with node one mainly. So you just got to do zero, zero, one. There you go. And then just hit accept. It'll yeah, tell you that it's disabled, disabled and active. It'll actually tell you the values of the smoke yeah. detector too. That's the percentage of how dirty it is or how <laughs> affected it is. It'll yeah. actually tell you. So then you just hit enable. It obviously doesn't ask you that question like it did when you disabled yeah. it because you're putting back protection. Yeah, putting it. Yeah. So and then once that's done, just hit back all the way out, and the system goes normal. Huh. So that's pretty cool. Um, do you want to look at the history? Here, yep. history display. What you'll usually walk up to is actually this. You'll see this. It'll, it actually says the notifier logo. And we have done it in the past. If you guys wanted to put the school logo on there, you could. Yeah. We've done it in the past, but it's, <laughs> it's in a closet. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> well, there is an enunciator up front, too. It'll show yeah. up there, too. But I've seen people do it. Actually, um, well, I've talked about that later. Main menu. So if you go to the history, hit main menu, history display, and you can actually look at the lo always look at the local history. You can do either troubles only, supervisors only, all events, alarms only. You can set a date and time interval. So if you say you, you were on vacation, you want to know what happened last, last week, week, something happened, you can yeah. actually set the dates of when you want to look at it. Over the weekend, yeah. sometimes the fire department will come in and just... Yeah, because like right now, if you look at the, all of the events, there's 4,000 of them. Whew. I don't know about you, but I don't want to scroll through 4,000 of those <laughs> just to find that one ground fault that banged in on the Saturday yeah, or yeah. something. So you can always go, um, so say you do troubles only. That was like 463 of them. Yeah. You can do a date and time interval and find, we'll like look at, week. yeah, we'll look at 8 o'clock, so just for training purposes, 8 o'clock a.m. from this morning to now. 53, which I'm surprised that there's that many. It's a lot Honestly, of them. no, I'm not surprised because that was probably me disabling and enabling stuff. Because any single oh, point. Oh, because they put points on yeah. you disable. When you enable. It's one speaker, but it's really 10 or something. Yeah, when you enable, then disable, one point, that's two events. And they'll yeah. the enable and the disable. Yeah. So it, it logs everything. And I've actually seen stuff where you've seen, like, you've probably seen troubles that just come in real quick. You know, barely beeps. Yeah. It'll log it in the history. Yeah. Okay. It'll log anything from a tenth, tenth of a second or something like that. It's, it's, it's pretty accurate. So, from there, what else is on here? Read status, you can look at it, you can look at a detector. So we can look at, once again, loop one, detector one. Node one, loop one, detector one. And I should tell you all, all the settings of it. See, action status, none, very, very clean. clean. It's brand new and it's got a cover on it still, which it shouldn't. Oh. <laughs> so, very, and it's pretty, it actually will tell you too, all the zoning is on too. But you, you shouldn't have to get worried into that. So, it tells you the alarm threshold, the free alarm threshold. It's pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. It'll come up maintenance required, maintenance urgent. There's dirty one and dirty two on the older panels. Maintenance required means it's probably going to be cleaned. Maintenance urgent can be cleaned, but replace. probably should think about replacing the detector. Yeah. And um, I think you guys, you should have my card somewhere for some, probably in, um, you can always just come pick them up from us too. We're right in Wakefield. So, oh, perfect. Um, you can order any, anything from us, notifier parts wise, detectors, pull stations, whatever yeah. you need. If you find out you need more pull station covers and stuff like that, you can get those too. Um, so from there, it's really, that's pretty much it. You want to see the other locations where they are? Yeah. Yeah, I'd like to. Yeah. So we can take a look at those stuff. And, um, you'll monitor uh, both BDA systems through this. So anything after the BDA systems comes through here, we'll trip on the radio box out. So. Any questions before I hit this off? No. Nope. Should be good. Everything's the same key, the 17021 key.